Today I want to talk about aftermarket fuel filters, well actually aftermarket dirt versus uh, genuine fuel filters on the 6.0 and also how to install them. Because there's actually different quality of aftermarket ones. Some are pretty good and some are bad. And even the ones that are bad, you wouldn't expect. Such as this one right here, this is Napa Gold's filter. You get them at CarQuest, Napa, and they're actually one of the worst sealing ones and the worst, worst uh, filters that we see. These ones here, this is the genuine. And this one here I buy off eBay, I can get these things for as cheap as maybe $12 for a set, and they're pretty good. I've been using them for over a year without a problem. So, um, you know, these, these are actually a good deal. But, so let me show you the, how to remove them, and what to do, what to look for. The upper filter, you can use either a 15 16 socket, a half inch drive, or here I use a snap-on flip socket it's pretty good it has a 24 millimeter because it's 24 millimeter or 15 16 and 36 millimeter for your oil filter or the lower fuel filter so I'm going to go ahead and use this snap-on one all I really do before I remove this is just make sure that the key's been off for say at least a minute or so so the pressure equalizes and drains down this one here does have a one of the aftermarket ones. It's one actually from CarQuest, which is the same as an Apple Gold. So I'll go ahead and take the filter out, inspect the bowl. I'm out here in the desert southwest and I normally see water contamination and this one looks pretty good. I don't see any water droplets. You'll actually see them on the bottom there. So this one looks good. I'm not worried about draining it. Plus the light's actually accurate. I'm going to go ahead and change this o-ring and check it out. This one is just pretty much basic straightforward. I just take the o-ring off the old one, remove it, take the new one, set it in the proper groove of course, put it on there, make sure it's not rolled. I, I usually just use a fuel as a lubricant, I don't have any issues with it. Now if I'm using the genuine uh, Ford one, also the AutoZone ones, when you get the AutoZone ones, they come the same, looks like the same people make them, which I'm told is great for. The AutoZone makes the pretty good quality ones. But if you have the ones here like that look like this, then I fit it onto the cap before I put it in. Because there it's a little bit of a snug fit, that way I don't damage it. So if you have the genuine, do that. If you have these aftermarket ones, then they, they really don't go anywhere. You can stick it in first, do whatever you want. So again, now the genuine, I'll stick it in there first, make sure it's flush, and just bring it down slowly, just so I don't spill a lot of fuel. Snug it up. It says to snug it up to 14 newt meters. Again, in the real world, we just snug it up here. Don't bear down on it, just snug it up, and that works. So now let's go ahead and go out to the lower one. The lower one has a few different options, though, which I would like to explain. Okay, on the lower one, there are a couple things. It depends if it's two wheel drive or four wheel drive or not. If it's two wheel drive, I just use the same socket here with a small one inch extension on it for the 36 millimeter and get right up inside there. If it's a four wheel drive to get past the transfer case, I have a 24 inch extension here that I'll put the socket on and then reach this up behind the transfer case and come in here and remove it. So if we act like this is a four wheel drive, you can see there I just put the socket on, come back here, and this way I'm all behind the transfer case and I can remove it. Now, one other thing, this is going to run down the frame rail, so I usually like to put some rags here just to catch it. If I put the rags there and my, with my drain bucket, it's going to go down and go right into it. So let's go ahead and bring this one loose. And once it starts to leak, I'll let it, I'll go a lot slower and let it drain out. And if you want, or if it's if you do live in the climates where you get the water and the fuel, this is a six millimeter to where you would drain the water and fuel. Don't over tighten this. This thing strips out real easy. There's only actually one real thread in there, <clears throat> one real thread in it, and it'll strip out. So be careful tightening this. Don't over tighten it. And and I don't do that in our climate just because it's never needed. It's never an issue. Right now, once I have it loose, my rag up here. Slowly bring it out. Mm 
move the uh, brake line here. Sometimes, a lot of times, these would be clipped in there, but we just move it out of the way, grab the filter, go straight. If you're coming off the fuel pump, don't try to pull it and bend it out. Now, if you notice, too, I rotated this and how it's clean up here. I'm going to talk about that in a second. Let's go ahead and take the filter out. In the same way, going back on with the genuine one. Doesn't matter where you put it, this is automatically going to rotate and go to the top. And it does that because there's a weep hole, which I'll talk about here in a second. And this seals on the back of the housing here, which all that I'll go over. So we'll take this one, just keep it as clean as possible. Same thing, just put it on straight. Stick it up in there. Put a new seal on the cap. Usually I just pinch it together, take the seal off. Same thing, install the new one. Lubricate it with a little fuel. If you like, get some assembly lube on it and put it up in there. things I want to cover because there's actually quite a bit of difference here on the bottom ones and it's a few things are really important there's different types of the way they're sealing against the fuel pump this is the fuel pump where we slid the filter off of so here we have the fuel pump and this one I just removed and it, it, this one actually works on like a rubber wiper type that seals against the fuel pump and the housing with this one and this one here works pretty good you can see most of the filters being used again just the top where we're not getting any flow through so it's pretty, it, it's working. The other aftermarket ones, same thing, get pretty good flow, get it all. But now some of them you get where they don't have that weep hole I was talking about, or vent hole that I was talking about earlier. Now look how much of this filter we're actually using. We're using maybe 30% of it. So this filter is pretty much going to get plugged up just because there's not much of the surface area being used. And this one does not have the weep hole or the there's the, the vent hole, like what I'm talking about. And it has this tab, so as we tighten it, it'll bring it up. And with the vent hole, it allows the whole cavity to get full of fuel and flow through everywhere. When you get the cheap ones like this without the vent hole, then we, with the fuel, fuel filter never fills up and starts flowing properly. Just to show you, here's the fuel pump, just to show you what's going on inside of there and what's happening. As you can see here, this is the way it spaces up. There's a an area right here you can see that ledge that lip to where the fuel filter will rotate at least a quality fuel filter I'm trying to find one here because these are actually all pretty bad so go back with the original one or even off ebay go back with these and it'll rotate up this tab will hit the one that's inside there and hold the vent hole all the way up and seal and also these with this o-ring will go inside and seal against the housing inside of there it's a whole lot better original equipment and some of the manufacturers off eBay. Actually, the ones that you expect to be better, here we can see them. It's a, uh, well, this one calls itself a Luber Finer. One of the worst ones is a Baldwin. A Baldwin filter. That's actually one of the worst ones. No, no hole, no quality, no flow. And then here we have a CarQuest. Again, poor sealing at the end here, the way it would butt up. In the same way with uh, Napa Gold, either one of them, not a quality filter. You're better off buying some of these off eBay for 15 bucks or getting a quality one than getting what you would think would be good from Napa or CarQuest. So hopefully that helps out to show you how to do it and what to look for when you're looking for a, at least a decent fuel filter. Okay, one last pointer on these fuel filters. They should be self-bleeding and it's the same way too if you run out of fuel. It should just be able to add the fuel and turn the key on and go. But if you want to be, or at least increase your odds that you don't have any air in the system, turn your key on and just do this. Uh, the book will tell you up to six times, but at least do it two or three times with a 20, 30 second interval in between key cycles. That way the key pump, the fuel pump's being commanded on now and it's helping to bleed the system. And if you do this, you won't have any regrets later. 
So hopefully these, the info here helps you out. If you find any useful information on my videos, please like and subscribe. Thank you.